This is Model Steam Engine's Top Tip Time Part 30. And the first one in this episode is how to mount a hand pump on a block of metal which will fix to the baseboard. Some hand pumps can be screwed directly to the baseboard, but this type is designed to be bolted in the water tank of a tender. And the first part of this episode shows how I make a mounting block to lift the pump above the baseboard as well as using a commercial check valve with the ball removed for a right angle connection. I'm going to cut this block and mount this hand pump on the block itself. And to do this I'm using my horizontal metal cutting bandsaw. This hand pump has a ram which is half an inch in diameter, which means it will move more water, but the problem is this kind of hand pump is designed to be immersed in water in the back of a tender or fitted in the side tank of a model steam locomotive. And to make it work in my application I have to mount it on a block and use a right angle steam fitting in order to pipe it up. The steam fitting that I'm using for this is a clack valve or check valve and I'm about to test it and see if it works. To test the pump I've put a piece of pipe down into a water bottle and as you can see in this clip the pump works perfectly. Pumps of this type ideally need to be self priming and this one is so everything's okay and it pumps a good amount of water at every stroke. Now I need to mount this pump on the metal block that I've just cut on the bandsaw, but the brass plug that screws into the end of the clack valve is a bit too big, so I need to take this out, put it in the lathe, machine a little bit off and refit it, and I'll be able to mount the pump on the metal block perfectly. And you can see this clearly in this clip, I just shortened the end of the brass cap, and the pump now sits on the metal block and everything's okay. The next part of the job is to drill a couple of holes in the block, countersink them and use some wood screws to screw the block down onto the baseboard. I also need to drill and tap four holes around the edge of this block to fix the pump to the block itself after it's been finally fitted to the baseboard. With the metal block securely clamped in the vise on the drilling machine, I'm first of all using a centre drill to make pilot holes on the marks that are scribed on the block and then I use a 3 16ths of an inch diameter twist drill to drill all the way through the holes and this will allow me to use some substantial wood screws to fasten the block to the wooden baseboard and I'm deeply countersinking the holes to take the heads of the countersunk wood screws. The next part is to mark out the block around the edge to take the pump. Here are the four holes marked out ready for drilling and now it's over to the drilling machine to drill them first of all with a centre drill followed by a tapping size drill for 6BA which in this case is a number 42 drill. On screen at the moment I'm showing the tapping of the holes. Now a 6BA tap is very small and they will break off very easily and you don't want that to happen. So it's a good idea to use some lubricant. After tapping all of the holes in the block it's time to fit some studs and I'm making these out of some long brass bolts. I screw the brass bolts all the way in and then just chop them off to the right length and clean up the end of the threads. In this clip you see the finished job. The nuts are obviously not in place, but the pump fits quite nicely onto the studs. I have a kit of parts. Before I go any further, and before I make any more bits and pieces, I need to figure out the best place to put everything on the baseboard. As you can see, I have a plywood baseboard, and I'll be veneering this with some mahogany strip before I finish the job. By way of an experiment, I'm going to fit an injector to this plant. Normally I would only fit injectors to model steam locomotives because when you run them lots of water gushes out of the bottom before you make the fine adjustment and the injector starts to pump the water into the boiler. In a stationary installation you have a bit of a problem because you need to drain this water away. I'm not going to use a chocolate tin, I'm using this to illustrate the principle. The tank needs to be elevated and it needs to sit in another tank to catch the water. These are the connections, the steam inlet, the steam outlet, and you can't see from my thumb, but underneath, next to the water inlet, is the water outlet. For injectors to work, they need to be kept cool, so having the injector mounted next to the water tank is a good idea. I'll be using one of these valves as the water inlet valve for the injector. This is all quite experimental, and I think I'm going to put the tank here, in about this position. It'll be level with the top of the boiler, on a nice pedestal, inside a second tank. I've drawn the position of the second tank on the piece of plywood using a compass. Time now for a bit of technical drawing. I'm going to make one of these. This is a steam turret. 
and it will have the valves on it for the engine and the injector and also the whistle. But that's in another episode. I've been up to Blackgate's engineering and bought some brass sheet and some copper tubing. I already had the top copper tube, but I needed to buy a shorter piece of copper tubing that was a larger diameter than the top part. And once this piece of copper tubing is soldered to the base, this will form the overflow tank to catch the overflow from the injector. And after I've fitted a drain pipe to this bottom tank, I'll be able to pipe the drain to a bucket on the floor. So as the injector's working, there will not be water all over the bench. Both the base and this second piece of brass sheet are three millimeters thick. And this brass sheet is going to be cut to make the lid and the base of the tank itself. The tank needs to be elevated, so there's always water above the injector. In this clip, I'm marking the length that I need for the central column that supports the main water tank. I've made a mark on the brass bar using a felt tip pen, and now it's over to the metal cutting bandsaw to cut it to length. I'm going to machine the larger diameter piece of copper, which forms the tank that will catch the water from the injector, on the larger of my two lathes I have in the workshop. This one is fitted with a four-jaw self-centering chuck, and in this clip I'm turning the chuck by hand and using a deburning tool to remove the edge that the cutting tool's left. Once I machined both ends of the piece of copper tubing, I refitted it in the chuck with the jaws on the inside of it so I could use a piece of emery cloth to clean up the outside. I'm using an old belt from my one inch belt sander to do this. And in the time that it took to machine the copper tubing, the bandsaw cut the piece of brass to the right size and it's currently been machined in my Boxford lathe to the correct length. Now when I hold the parts in position, you should get the idea of what this is going to look like. In this clip, I'm checking that the center column is the correct length by placing a ruler across the top of the tank and the column itself. And now it's time to machine the brass bar. I could have left the brass bar as it was, just plain, but I don't like to see bar stock on a model in its original unfinished state. It's not difficult to do some fancy machining on it, and the machining really isn't very fancy. But when it looks like this, it looks more industrial revolution. But leaving the bar in its plain unfinished state just makes it look very poor. It's a bit mad really, because when this part's in place, you'll hardly be able to see it. And I'm being very careful not to weaken it too much. If I make it too thin, then the upper tank would wobble about, and I don't want this to happen. With the semi-ornamental turning completed, I can try it in position. I've threaded one end only, and I'll show you why later on in the next video. And now when I put my steel ruler on the top of the column, you get the general idea of what it's going to look like. And that is it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.